Konnichiwa, Tomodachi. Akemashite, omedeito gozaimasu. Happy New Year from Japan. It's been about six weeks since my last entry, so I figured it's about time to give you guys a little update on what's been going on here over near Tokyo. Firstly, you'll notice I am sporting my Eagles jersey, Brian Westbrook, for anyone who's interested. I was finally able to see the last couple Eagles games because they were on at Sunday night, so I could watch them on Monday morning, especially with the holidays I didn't have work, and it was great. Uh, so I got to see them beat Dallas, and we'll see how they do in the playoffs. Let's go, Eagles! Um, <laughs> otherwise, uh, Japan stuff, let's see. So, winter, it's winter time, and it's pretty comparable to home in Pennsylvania. It gets down in the 20s or so at night. Uh, it's been in the 40s to 50s most days. We haven't seen any snow yet. Uh, it's been cold enough at night, but no no snow quite yet, though the windshield does frost over quite a bit, and I use that scraper that that Japanese man gave me to clear my windshield, so uh, it was very nice, and I'm making good use of that. So here are a few things that I've done over the past six weeks or so. I finally made it down to... Tokyo, Tokyo, the actual heart of Tokyo. Technically, I live in Tokyo, but I'm more in the suburbs. So here are some pictures of Tokyo Station. It's gigantic, and it's really, really nice architecture. Here is the shortest escalator that I've ever come across. This is inside Tokyo Station. So they say Americans are lazy, but it looks like the Japanese are lazy too, or maybe it's really just to combat elderly population here. But... In any case, I have read about a three-step escalator. You can watch a video of it on YouTube. I might visit that if it's convenient because it's just hilarious to me. Here's me with one of those only in Japan type of statues. I've got a series of photos here just walking from Tokyo Station to the Imperial Palace. Went to go visit the Imperial Palace Gardens to see what it was like. It was pretty cool. So you'll see pictures of that in a little bit. Um, weather was great. It's really, really close to Tokyo Station. Easy walk, just about 10 to 15 minutes to get from Tokyo Station to the Imperial Palace. The Imperial Palace itself, uh, that's where the Emperor and his family live. They've got a moat and these gigantic walls to keep people out of the actual palace. Um, so they have guards at a bunch of gates. You can't actually go inside except for a few days a year, which I think are the Emperor's birthday, which is December 23rd, I want to say. And then also on New Year's, I think they also let you go and see the family. I didn't try to do that. figured it'd be way too crowded. This is me doing stupid gaijin stuff. Being an American gets you a little leeway here. You can act a little dumb and be okay. I try not to abuse it, but every once in a while I have a little fun with it. The gate guard obviously loves me, and the playground equipment, tons of fun. This is probably my favorite picture that I've taken in Japan so far. And I've got a new camera lens and external flash on the way in the mail. I'm excited about that. Amazon Prime still does work in Japan, but instead of two-day shipping, it's five to seven business day shipping, which usually means I get my stuff in 10 to 14 calendar days. That sucks compared to what I'm used to, but Amazon's still good. This is just one picture from Robot Restaurant. I posted a video with a compilation of all the highlights on Facebook already. If you haven't checked it out yet, I recommend that you do. It's absolutely insane. But basically, you pay $50 to see this show. You get really crappy food. But it's about a little over an hour show with the most random things you will ever see. Girls dancing, robots fighting, tie-dye, afro, skater people. Just watch the video and I won't even try to explain it anymore. A friend of mine made me aware of animal cafes in Japan. So they have rabbit cafes and cat cafes and... Dog cafes, but that's really where you, most people are just bringing their own dogs because they can't take care of a bunch of dogs. But anyway, uh, I decided to go to one of the cat cafes. This one is in Shinjuku. And it's a really interesting experience. 
uh, you usually get there and it's 1200 yen so about $12 to go in there for an hour and it's just literally a cafe with cats everywhere there's probably 30 cats there and they have two floors and they've got like couches where you can just relax they have manga books they've got a Wii if you really want to hang out there you can buy tuna for like 300 yen if you want to feed the cats and have them come up to you but uh, I just was kind of observing and seeing what was going on and the cats some of them are friendly and will come up to you other ones are just sleeping and want to be left alone the only really rules are you're not supposed to disturb the cats that are sleeping and you're not supposed to pick them up. But if they jump on your lap or they come to, in, up to you for you to pet them, that's okay. And as long as they're not sleeping, you can go and pet them. If you really want to be there all day, it looks like for 3,000 yen you could be there all day long. And I'm pretty sure some people did that because they were just sleeping on the couches, passed out. And I'm sure they took advantage of the all-day thing just to to hang out there it's uh if you like cats it's a it's a fun time I, I miss Tony my cat from California obviously no replacement for that little guy but it was nice to get a little cat fix in I guess um, I'm not allowed to have any pets here in my house as part of my lease agreement so yeah that's the, the cat cafe I've talked to some friends about other animal venture cafes me personally, I think a sloth cafe would be awesome. High demand for it, I'm sure. So if anybody's willing to stake me some capital to partner with me to open up a sloth cafe in Tokyo, let me know. The Cat Cafe Expedition was right before Christmas, so let me just give you a brief education on Christmas in Japan. So the majority of people in Japan are not Christian. The religion here is either no religion or Shinto or Buddhist for the most part. So Christmas really isn't celebrated religiously, but it is celebrated in the culture in interesting ways. For example, I read into this because it, it fascinated me. Uh, KFC and pizza are really popular on Christmas Day. Um, KFC in particular because they started a marketing campaign in the early 70s that basically said, Christmas is uh, chicken, and it was such a good marketing campaign that it kind of stuck. So a lot of people will go to KFC here on Christmas. There will be lines out the door. Um, so that's just interesting, something you don't see in the United States. Um, other things with Christmas here, they love Christmas lights. There's multiple places in Japan that just have millions, literally millions of Christmas lights that cover the whole landscape. I went to one local Christmas light showing here. They're called Illuminations. And, and then another one that was a little bit of a drive. So I'll show you pictures from that. It's pretty awesome. The first illumination is in Showa Park in Tachikawa, which is like a 17-minute train ride from where I live. So close, really easy to get to. It was 400 yen to go in, so like $4. And it's all lit up with these Christmas lights. There's a big fountain. They even had a maze, which was... A Christmas light maze kind of comparable to a corn maze except it really wasn't a maze at all there was literally you just walked through it it was a ripoff and worst two dollars I think I've ever spent but that's okay uh, the lights themselves were were beautiful and it was cold outside though that's for sure uh, when you go to these things at night make sure you wear gloves and <laughs> I made the mistake of not doing that whoops the second illumination we went to was in Samagiku Pleasure Forest. I don't make these names up. That was about a 40 minute drive. It was actually my first time driving on the highway. I literally only used my car to get to and from work. So this is the first time I took my car somewhere other than that. And there was no traffic. It was great. I think it was because there was a holiday and everybody was kind of done driving on that Saturday night. They'd already driven on Friday. But in any case, um, it was the first time I went above 60 miles per hour since being here, which is it's crazy to me because when you drive around Japan, there's so much traffic that you can rarely go faster than 40 miles per hour, if that. So it's just a very different way of driving here just because of traffic. Uh, the it all, It's also expensive. The tolls are like 
it was like eight dollars each way and then pay parking and it's expensive out here uh, this illumination was one of the bigger ones in japan that i saw advertised this one had over four million lights and as you can see in the pictures they're covered the whole landscapes with just lights and the ferris wheel has, has lights and just a cool event and i think it's just a interesting in that they do celebrate christmas so much here with the things that i mentioned before but it's it's cool for someone like me who's used to seeing that kind of stuff to be able to experience that here even though it's not really celebrated that way nobody gets off work for christmas or anything like that so the vlog entry wouldn't be complete without a funny story now this one's just a quick one we were out at a restaurant for a going away party and we were waiting for my friend david to show up and i could not i wasn't facing the entrance of the restaurant so i couldn't see it but the, our friends at the we were at two tables and our friends at the other table who could see the entrance said oh hey jeff i think that's him so I get up and start waving really enthusiastically at who I think is going to be David, and it's just some random Japanese person. So <laughs> uh, they gave me a weird look, and I sat back down, really embarrassed, and David showed up about 10 minutes later. So that's my funny story for this entry. Uh, otherwise, uh, a couple more things. I went to a place called Communist Gyoza for the first time. Here's some pictures from that. The gyoza here is really good. The reason they call it communist gyoza is because you have to order a drink with your meal. It doesn't have to be an alcoholic drink. It could be a soda or something, but you have to order a drink, and you're only allowed to order once. So if you're somebody who likes to have multiple beers with your meal, or you think you might want dessert or anything like that, you got to order it all right at the beginning. Otherwise, you're done. No gyoza for you. I'll finish up with a kanji update. I am up to 1,500 kanji now in 42 days. Uh, I'm really proud and excited about that progress. I've been studying, on average, I would say two plus hours a day. Uh, I, I study almost every day. There are a couple days where I will take off, but almost every day. And I will I have 542 more to reach my goal of 2042, most common kanji. And then I'll have my foundation of writing, being able to write kanji along with their English meanings. And then it'll be learning how to pronounce them in context because it does change depending on if they're part of compound words or by themselves and things like that. So I've started to learn some Japanese grammar and I'm able to actually recognize kanji and kana around town now. So I can sort of read some signs but not very well on trains and stuff. I will try to read like the ads and stuff and sound them out under my breath and I probably sound like a mentally challenged first grader or something trying to read and I'm actually 26 but that's okay because I'm trying to learn how to read in another language and that's the only way I'm going to be able to do it. So we'll see where that goes. I'll have an update on that one next time. So thanks for listening. Sayonara.